नमस्कार वेलकम टू दिस सेशन ऑफ स्ट्रेट ड्राइव ऑन द चैनल द पब्लिक डॉट इंडिया फ्रेंड्स आवर चैनल ऑलरेडी हैज वेरी स्ट्रॉन्ग पोलिटिकल कमेंट्री सेक्शन इन द थर्ड आई एंड नाउ लाइव इन हिंदी देर वॉज अ व्यू दैट वी शुड ऑल्सो रीच आउट टू दोज व्यूअर्स हु लाइक दिस प्रोग्राम in english and that's how this was started so we have done some program mainly touching certain uh, burning issues but were generally mainstream political issues have not been tackled yet and there is a section of our viewers who have simple political questions so i thought that also should be attempted and i was wondering which uh, superior intelligence i should turn to phir wo baat ho gayi jaise charag tale andhera so since we have mr anand vardhan singh himself who conducts third eye and live so i thought why not start with him and that is why today i'll be in discussion with anand vardhan singh please welcome him so i will start with my first question to you anand i'll take you back to the last years of upa 2 when there was a very cynical and hopeless atmosphere because of reasons you know then there was some young energy in the anna movement and then came 2013 later part and 2014 and there was a lot of hope built around particularly the prime minister narendra modi <coughs> would be prime minister at that stage well in his first 5 years some good works like direct bank transfer ujwala yojana construction of toilets and so many other things were done which are debatable but yet but it was generally overshadowed by the miseries faced because of note bandi in any case after 5 years riding on the popularity of the prime minister bjp came back to power once again in stronger numbers and there was a renewed hope that transformational changes may now take place with such a powerful government now there are two diametrically opposite bipartisan views today those who support bjp those who don't but many thinking people who are not committed one way or the other have this despair today so they have seem to be losing hope in the present government and at the same time though they don't see an an alternative also because you know the confusion which is on in congress party so i'm turning to you to ye jo conundrum hai ye dilemma isko aap kaise dekhte ho aur in aise logon ke liye aap क्या बताना चाहोगे थैंक यू सुधांशु इट इज अ वेरी बेसिक थिंग विच पीपल आर आस्किंग एंड नॉट ओनली यू पीपल अराउंड मी इन माई फैमिली इन लास्ट फाइव सिक्स ईयर्स यू माइट हैव सीन अ नरेटिव इवन इन योर हाउस देर आर वेरी स्ट्रॉन्ग बाई पोलर पीपल वन हु इज सपोर्टिंग मोदी वन हु इज नॉट सपोर्टिंग मोदी एंड थिंग्स लाइक दैट वॉट इज हैपन देर देर इज अ नेशन देर इज अ राष्ट्र जिसको कहते हैं देन देर इज अ गवर्नमेंट एंड देन देर इज अ पार्टी Uh, if you i will take you back to the congress regime of when the emergency was uh, promulgated by indira gandhi then people were against congress and indira gandhi came back after 3 years and came back with a majority what i am trying to say is the government was condemned uh, but the uh, the the nation and those were intact today what is happening in last 6 years somehow that has been that is the way it has been managed when even if you are, you talked of anna andolan anna andolan was there to uh, clean the government it was primarily to make a better uh, rashtra make a make a better nation today what is happening the rashtra the government and the party are all three in one i will make you i mean to make it simpler and easier to understand uh, when we were growing up then a very common thing of gandhi was sin and sinner 
matlab you hate the uh, sinner not the sin and things like you hate the sin not the sinner the, uh, all those things i will give a very small example and today we have about more than 40 42000 gurkhas serving in indian army and we have a problem with nepal as on date now can we say that nepalis are anti indian or we can abuse nepalis because 40 42000 nepalis who are gurkhas primarily are serving our own uh, nation are defending our motherland so the problem is that we might have a problem with nepal but we cannot abuse nepali now we might have a problem with pakistan we cannot abuse pakistani so if if this difference of sin and sinner one is understood then things become easier now today what is happening uh, like two days back if you see uh, on some man ki baat or some, something like that pakistan has nothing to do with this with the problem which we are facing with china but it is a easier target unnecessarily we never took a, no one took a name of uh, china we we bashed up uh, pakistan because it is a easier thing so my thing is uh, party government and uh, nation is now mixed up and it suits it suits the with the present uh, people present leadership okay thank you and kind of taking the same question a little bit in a different direction but with the same type of viewers in mind who are you know not a part of this bipartisan view but want to read news genuine news want to be informed listen to political commentaries and then form their own informed opinions so what are the op- options today you have print uh, you have tv and you have social media so you would remember earlier the pleasure of reading a newspaper in the morning with your first cup of tea was something everyone misses even today if they don't read newspapers similarly a program on current affairs and news or analysis on tv you would wait the whole day for that time to come and watch program i don't think that kind of uh, uh, you know interest in print media or tv remains primarily because <laughs> tv news has become a battle of perception and not information and it's it's like a propaganda machine which is constantly bombarding you with a certain narrative even print media you see news which looks like a reproduction of a press note so the social media is perhaps one medium which is holding up this uh, requirement of genuine news one thing they say social media viewing is very convenient i mean you can switch it on any time you want but i think reason of popularity of social media to my mind is more because newspapers and tv have receded from their primary function of news reporting and not propaganda so you i have seen you on social media and you present your analysis your views you ask questions and uh, let the viewers decide so do you think social media is the only thing that uh, neutral viewers have to turn to in future or uh, are thinking people will have only that option how do you look at this it is it is very simple i mean if you if it is very simple uh, especially for the print and the electronic media first i will dealt with that print and electronic media in past has been there that if you buy a newspaper today say times of india now it it costs 3 rupees or 4 rupees or maybe 5 5 rupees but the cost of printing of that newspaper and reaching your place i mean when i'm talking of cost of printing pre printing where that reporter the photographer they go in the field they bring the wo then the the processing part of it when the news is made on the table which is editing part of it and then it is uh, production when it is newspaper is printed this all will not cost less than 20 to 25 rupees for a newspaper of a english newspaper i am i have talked of uh, times of india uh, same uh, will be for a 12 page newspaper or a 16 page newspaper it will not be less than 15 rupees you pay 3 to 4 rupees now someone is paying this 12 rupees now whoever pays this 12 rupees will decide that what news should go it is as simple as that if is the government is paying then the government will decide if an individual is paying 
then that individual will, de will decide. So as far as the print and uh, electronic media is concerned, this, these are things are very clear. Now this is more blatant. Now the society is more blatant, things are more blatant. So uh, there was a lobbying in at some point of time, now there is no lobbying, it is directly. As far as the social media is concerned, if you, you turn on social media, the costs are now so high, uh, it is still content driven. Uh, if two, three, four people decides that we will we will do something, uh, I will not take names, but there are, there are a lot of people who are good, doing an excellent job. But even a social media today needs money, and you will you will come across even a Wikipedia. For last ten days, if you have seen, they are asking for money. I mean, if you do, go there, yeah, they are asking yeah, for two hundred rupees or yes, hundred fifty yes. rupees donation. donation. Yes. So any media needs money. Now the today the viewer or the reader has to decide that is he ready to uh, pay that money. Now if you pay 3 rupees, if you pay 4 rupees, then you will get a news which which so called sponsoring uh, agency or maybe government, maybe whosoever is bridging that gap of 12 rupees or 15 rupees will, will decide. So it is as simple as that. Social media, yes. Social media, me and you, like uh, we don't have a business plan today. Now, we uh, think that what is whatever we feel is this is the way it should happen this is the way people should interpret we don't we don't have a larger plans now if you have a larger plans then you need money so we are uh, that is that is as simple as that so also uh, yeah so, uh, talking about social media so there is a feeling today that because of all these trolls fake news uh, uh, then IT cell intervention from all parties, particularly the ruling party. So do you think this role of social media in hardcore election winning, is it overrated or is, has it really become that important? Uh, social media today, what is happening? Social media per se, uh, first of all, it is very convenient. I will again, I will again give you an example of our times. I, I still remember when I started smoking some, some in class 10th or 11th. I will give with a very different example. My brother who was uh, six years senior to me, who, was, who passed out from IMA, told me and say, he said that please don't smoke because it, it uh, kills your health. And then he said if you want you can drink. So I was not able to understand because drinking at that point of time for R was a, was a much bigger taboo than uh, smoking. But today when I look back, drinking you will do at evening, 7 o'clock, 8 o'clock. Smoking is something, morning get 6 o'clock, night 2 o'clock, you are in bad mood, good mood, you are with someone, not someone. Same thing is happening with the social media. You sit in a bathroom, you are there on the, you, you, you are there, I mean I have seen, you, you also have seen. People who are at a responsible places, I mean people who are running the country. You send them a WhatsApp, within seconds it, they see that. So I don't know Madhav, how they are running uh, their own uh, business, but they, they are hooked to that. Now, again your basic question, this, this media has also empowered a lot of people. And people today feel whatever, if I start giving some information, good, right or wrong, because if you remember in our times, there was a thing, ki paper mein nikla hai. Now, paper mein nikla hai, it is a gospel truth. Same way, WhatsApp is a gospel, gospel truth. So, jokingly people call it a WhatsApp university. Now, there are people, interested groups. I will not say only BJP. Even Congress, Congress has a, has a poor team of uh, trolls. BJP has a better team, a team of uh, trolls. So, I mean, th that is as the, the differences of, uh, of quality. But as far as they are, they want constantly, they are giving you, feeding you something, something, something every time. And then you start believing it. So the, the thing of social media is, is that that is a problem with social media. I have another simple question. Uh, see the hallmark of a democracy, true democracy is fearlessness in speaking out and voicing your opinion. Now there is a view today that that freedom is being suppressed. Now let me try to understand in a small town with its gundaism and small town issues, we see cases of journalists being harassed or even, even murdered. But in a larger platform, Pan India or even 
a bigger platform, I don't think that danger really exists. The danger is more from what you just said is perhaps the money power and convenience of aligning with at least those in power or something like that. But at the same time, uh, I also have ex your example itself and there are many other examples where uh, people are able to vo voice uh, their opinion independently and uh, to that extent independent journalism, journalism is being kept alive more by social media and what would you like to say? Certainly, I mean there is no doubt on that because uh, if I am working for, I've, I had a print media ex experience of, for a very long time. I will, I will tell you a very, again a very simple example. Suppose my circulation of my print media, I mean any, any newspaper you say there is a there is a circulation. Now suppose there is a circulation 1 lakh. I can bet on this that none of the newspapers will print 1 lakh. They, have, they will be printing something between 10,000 to 20,000, 30,000. 30, the best of the, them will be printing 50,000. Now inherent uh, thing is there then I am filing a return of 1 lakh. So any day a government agency today wants in last 72 years, any newspaper, if a government agency wants, can be picked up like this. Because you go, you check their uh, electricity bill, you check their uh, ink bill and all, it, it can be caught that you are fudging figures. So, I am I'm absolutely clear on that. Social media gives me a freedom that if I am fair to my commitment, if I am honest to, to what I say and if I have control on my language, because language is something because people uh, in my shows also people have come, they start abusing and then I always say, I mean especially the trolls, when they come, they, the first thing is they will try to dislodge you by giving you abuses of left, right and center. Now if you resist, they certainly tone down, they change their language. So if you have control on your language, you are not, not abusive, but you say honestly what you are. I will give you another example of my channel. Sandeep Pandey is one who, who roams around everywhere, who goes for the CA, um, anti-CA demonstration and all the things which is not comfortable to the, to the government. He, he rides a bicycle, but he has, a, I mean, I, I will not say he is never, uh, he is fearless. Yeah. And uh, till now, uh, he has not been picked up by the police. At times, police has asked him not to come out of his house, but uh, otherwise he is fairly free to hear his views. And I also, to be honest, till now I have not been, there are, those things are there, it is, it is your occupational hazards, Facebook hacking or someone trolling or someone doing something, those, those things are there, someone ringing you up is, is all occupational hazard. You have been working, those things happen, but otherwise by and large I do not uh, see any problem. So let me come to my last question away from journalism and so on. So you have, I've seen good insight into what India is or what India has become over the years since independence to where it is today. And also you have had a great benefit of a large spectrum of personalities you have invited to your live show. So in your opinion, for our viewers, what are the three major or most important challenges that our country faces today i will i will i will take the liberty of rephrasing it to my convenience i will say that the three uh, i will not say challenges the three things which needs the immediate uh, attention i will say from 1 to 10 corona corona and corona because that is something which is telling on our economy, that is something which is telling on the health, that is something which is telling on the education system, everything. Things are not in, uh, in control. Uh, we must address that. The rest, all of all these things can wait. The second is China because I am from a, from a philosophy or from a thing where it was always advocated that for India, China is a bigger threat. Pakistan or Bangladesh or these, they are not threats. China is the threat. So we must understand Chinese because just by telling that we will do with Chinese this, Rafal will come and this will do, is not correct. China is a bigger threat. It's a bigger power militarily, it is economically, everything. And the third is economy. 
economy is in as far as i i understand economy is whatever i have understood is in bad shape people are facing uh, unemployment people are facing their daily wages people are facing their daily livelihood so this is these three i will corona china and economy i will rate it this way thank you very much so anand uh, i don't know how you felt being a guest in your own channel but uh, i'm sure our viewers liked it and um, we would like to hear about it from you friends uh, we will meet again next thursday namaskar thank you